we feel quite strongly that the animals that have been here for a long time should see their lives out. There is pressure, obviously, for, for cage space, certainly for endangered species. But we feel quite strongly that, that you know, if an animal's been here a long time, as long as it's fit and healthy, that it should, uh, it should see its life out here. Not always a popular view. Spider monkeys in the wild, um, they live in South America. Um, they live in sort of small family groups. Most of these I've seen grow up from youngsters. Like I say, they've all, apart from Gertie, they've all been bred here. They gain your trust as well. Um, you know, they eventually sort of come over and they're quite, you know, they're quite friendly now. No mind, no mind, no mind. The ones we got here, we started off with three different species of spider monkeys. So obviously when we bred them, they're all sort of hybrids. In those days, I think it was a case of, with zoos and stuff, they just had stuff in to exhibit. Come on, do you want some food? Um, whereas now, with conservation and everything, um, you'd never hybridise anything. Uh, those have to be purebred. Yeah, good girl. You want a bit of banana? So we... Uh, decided to castrate the males and uh, just let them live out their lives as a, a little family group. Come on, chaps. Hello, Gertie. Hello, Gertie. Hello, Gert. Good girl. I mean, the friendliest ones are probably Gertie. She was wild caught in 1969 and uh, she came here in 1970. So she's been here since the park opened. Come on, chaps. Hello, Manga. This is Gertie's daughter, Manga. Yeah, yeah, you want to cuddle, but I don't want to cuddle you. No. Hey, silly girl. What are you doing? What are you doing? Who's coming today? The new male lion will be coming uh, from Bristol Zoo. He'll be put in the main house for overnight to settle in. Tomorrow's the day we'll put him out and let him meet her through the wire. Maybe Thursday or Friday we'll, uh, we'll mix them. Come on, silly girl. Uh, in the wild, uh, if, if her mate had died, she would have probably vocalised and attracted another male or another male would have been in the area and, and known there was a lone female. We're just doing it for them, you know. It could go beautifully or they could fight. So that, that's the worrying thing. Oh, she's got a face like thunder. She's not a happy cat today. <laughs> Um, right, well we want that end, we need to get it out, turn it, and go that way. It's the fun bit. Yeah, right up to the door. Okay. A bit more. Yeah. Well, the wooden one's coming out now, Jamie, all right? How much did he have? I mean, he could just suddenly snap out of this, but... OK, let's leave him and just check now. Okay. Uh, well. Just give a shout out of him. Brilliant. Thanks. Thanks, chaps. Oh. I mean, the starting point was... I was certainly spending too much time in the office and there was no way around that. But I felt I was losing touch with the actual um, troops, if you like. OK. Right, you know the purpose of it. So Jamie was made up to deputy uh, and he'll coordinate 
basically the, between the keepers and myself. Okay, and, and that, that's it really. Uh, my new job here is assistant curator, which is essentially sort of assisting with, with any daily matters of the running of the park, but also sort of much more involvement in the running of the animal collection as a whole. He knows his animals. He's got quite a lot of experience in a variety of zoos, both here and in Europe. And I trust his opinions and trust him to get on and do that without, without bothering me, basically. What is your plan for moving them, Mark? Oh, I just think the dangers of them running with this amount of animals to run them down is they're quick. You'd almost want to block off the visual barrier, wouldn't you? All the way around. My honest opinion is I've always had a vision for the, for the whole park, you know, really from the first day I came, you know. But I certainly have plans for all areas of, of everything all the time. So um, it's seeing how that fits into, you know, what, what we want as a park how that fits into what the other the section heads want as well, because obviously, you know, that they're, they're still managing their sections. Yeah. Yeah, so right none through. of this is going to be, and you're going to hopefully have some sort of small yard. Yeah, two, two yards, okay. just in case we need to isolate anything. So you won't touch barrier. anything in here, really. You just leave it as it is, let yeah. them trash it. Yeah. Well, that, that was one of the things, you know, like selling points for Reggie, was the fact that we wouldn't have to do anything in there. It's worth as well, if you get any old logs now and tree trunks, dragging them in, letting them rot down a bit, just to put as much in there now while it's easy access. Yeah. Yeah. No, that'd be good. Do you want to have a look at the wolves then, Mark, just yeah. to see what's going to go on with them? Chandraman. <laughs> Snap out of it. Let's, come on, let's have a bit of a roar. Come on, have a drink. <laughs> oh, baby. Well, that's not very good, is it? You're a right mess now, aren't you? Yeah, come in. Yeah, I've got Peter on the phone at the minute. Can you just give me a, an update? Yeah, he's uh, looking about. He's got one leg out the uh, crate. He's quite alert. Uh, he's vomited a bit, but he's still in the box. OK, cheers, Anna. Park each one. Jamie, when you're next to your phone, can you give me a call, please? Uh, when I finished in the reptile house, Lou, I'll pop up. Okay, cheers. Uh, and you've got that the viewing window, so you can see that one before you go in. The position of everything. Yep, brilliant. Move this one's non venomous. Yeah, no problem. So this one's all done. Uh, we've got the Dumbledore's Grand Baron here. We've just put the female in for now. Come on, mate. So he's going to have to sleep, isn't he? Yeah! <laughs> That's better. Well, you need to check with the consultant whether he wants you to do that, because he might say he doesn't want you to do that. When I first held a position like this, you're very gung-ho, and you're going to do it my way or it's all going to go wrong. That, that isn't a way of managing people. You need to, you know, to show people that you're also on their side. Yeah, this is from doctors. This is yeah. nothing I've put together. Well, yeah, exactly. something from doctors. I mean, so I think as long as people respect your workload and aspects of your work, you're never going to get people who agree with everything that you say. But you know, as you say, it's a challenge, but it's one that I'm quite happy to do. It's just to cover yourself. Steady, mate. Oh, yeah. That's a good boy. Hey, Chandra. Hey. All right, darling. All right, darling. That's better. Hey. All right, calm down. Calm down. Good boy. Shall we open up and let you see the girl? Hmm? See your new girlfriend? Oh, waste. Right, I think we'll open up the slides and let them meet each other safely. Well, he's obviously a lot better than, than yesterday. He's fully come fully round, he's looking nice and alert. So the next stage now is to open this slide up, which gives access to the tunnel between the house and the outside pen, where Aquila is. But there's a mesh door at the end, so they can only have nose-to-nose -nose through the mesh contact. 
see how it goes before we do the mix. Um, it's, we've just got to monitor their reaction to each other. <laughs> now, well, he's noticed the door's open. He may go and have a look. She certainly knows there's something going on, so she'll, she'll come over and see him, I think. Coming out. Aha, that looks great. He is a big lad. He's tall. Oh, there she is again. Oh. Hello, baby. <laughs> nice. Oh, nice nose to nose. As an initial response, that's brilliant. You don't get better than that. No. That's great. Yeah, literally, that's just saying that, you know, two new lines meeting for the first time. Nice, though. No aggression. Oh, look at her. Tart. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that's coming to get me big boy language. <laughs> Really keen to let him out now, but it's, this is the wrong time of day to do it, just in case something did go wrong. So, you know, we'll, we'll wait. We don't want to rush it. But this is the first big thing on, on, on our section for quite a while, you know. He's the, he's the biggest arrival for a long time. So getting him settled in and getting them hoping they're compatible is very, very important. It's exciting, though. Breaks the routine. Come on, darling, let's go and see Akira. Good boy. When you're prepping for something like this, you're always thinking about what could go wrong. You just don't know until you mix them. There's not a lot you can do, do about it. You've got to do it. You've got to mix them. Let's, let's go see what happens. go beautifully, or oh, they could fight. Oops. I knew there'd be some of that. Hi, Matt. See our new boy? He's a beauty, isn't he? No problem. One initial boxing match, but I expected that. Yeah. Which she won. He's got yeah. a cut. He's got a cut to the on the right of his right eye. Nothing major. We should give him a right bashing. This is almost like a textbook first mixing for big cats. The initial nonchalance at first, then that one little scrap. Uh, no complete standoff really. K keeping a weather eye on each other all the time, but not getting too close. I'm going to I'm going to tempt fate and say it's been a really really good first mix. Really good. As a whole, we have a pretty good collection. Uh, from a personal level, we've got the shafaka and we've got the bamboo lemurs, which is something that I really, I really wanted. I'm fairly happy at the minute, although there are always things I would like to bring in, but you really need to, rather than have this wish list, which is just pie in the sky, you need to see an area develop. You need to see a chink in the armour of, of, of an area that needs to develop and then get in there, plan it all out, and then go from there. Um, just preparing the afternoon feed for the spider monkeys. Uh, it'll be the last time I'm preparing the feed for them because they're going tomorrow. They're going to a college near Chester where they're going to um, do studies on them, basically. It's just like a retirement home from really. We decided that we'd get something a bit more, uh, a bit rarer and um, something we can breed. So it'd be quite interesting. The species that we are bringing in are a type of large primate called a purple faced langer, uh, which are very rare in captivity. We don't have a lot of larger primate species, so the ones that we do display and exhibit, I believe, need to have some conservation value and some educational value, and we need to make the most of the, of the facilities that we've got. What are you doing? 
What are you doing? I'm a bit nervous about tomorrow morning catching them up. Hello, Menga. We've never had to um, box any of these spider monkeys up in all the years I've been here. You know, this is their home and they've never sort of moved away from here. Come on, then. Come on. It's going to be a bit of a wrench on, tomorrow when they go, I must admit. Come on, Gertie. They're all little characters and, I mean, Gertie especially being in her early 40s now as well, so we're a bit sort of worried about um, how she's going to cope with the move. Fingers crossed she'll be okay. With animals, it's very difficult to be too sentimental, whereas those animals are going to go somewhere where they're going to get care for the rest of their lives. Not to say that they wouldn't get that here, but we're, we're a zoo trying to, trying to move forward. Hi, Gertie. Oh. So, yeah, I'm sure people will be sad to see things go, just as they were sad when the lion died. But over the years, you know, animals come, animals go, animals live and animals die. Personally, you get attached, but they come and go, and it's a fact of life, and it's good for the species, and it's good for the individuals. And what's happening, dear? Hey? They don't know, do they? They're just acting as normal. So, like I say, they, as far as they're concerned, there's not a, there's not a problem, sort of thing. I do back and a half day. Come on, it's all right. Hey, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. There we go. Gertie's just fallen on the floor, Al. Gertie's just fallen on the floor. Is she gonna make it? Is she gonna? Is she gonna last this journey? And 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 the and the trauma and everything. No, she ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Right. Right. Let's see if we can get the other buggers in now. In you go, Daffy. Go on, in you go. In you go. She's in, she's in, she's in, she's in, she's in. Yes. Oh, miss her. Sounds strange, but I'm almost relieved that, that it's, not, it's not going. Yeah, I am as well. It's really strange. Hey, Dylan, man. Hey, Dylan, man. Good adventure, mate. <laughs> Good adventure. <laughs> We came in early, me and Alan, to catch the spider monkeys up because they're going to this college today. Um, unfortunately, um, Gertie, we found her in a bit of a weak state, so we decided that um, she wasn't going to travel. And we thought probably with her age and everything and um, just her general sort of health, we've decided that uh, she's going to stay here. Because we were hoping that um, before all this, um, before we move the spider monkeys, that perhaps Gertie would sort of drift off on her own accord and not go through all this trauma sort of thing. But unfortunately, uh, like I say, this morning we come in and uh, she was just, there was no way we were going to let her travel. So, and, and just the, the stress of it all probably would have killed her anyway, I think. The vet's coming in today and uh, we'll get the vet to put her down today. So, um, no, it's, not, it's a lot nicer that she ends her days here. Purple-faced langur or purple-faced leaf monkey is a primate from Asia, Sri Lanka specifically. Certainly they are endangered through habitat destruction. Um, populations in zoos at the minute, in, in Europe I think there's probably about, probably not many more than 10, and predominantly males, so, you know, to, to get them breeding again would be fairly important. There we go. Hello, Lily. Come on, then. Hello, Lily. Come on. Come on then. There you go. Come on. A little bit nervous. For the average member of public, it's probably a monkey above a certain size, but for us, it fulfills the roles of, there's a great educational story behind leaf-eating monkeys. They're an endangered species. There is the potential, as I say, with this species to build it from ground level. Things stay quiet for so long here, you know, you work with something for so many years, then all of a sudden you're given something new to look after, especially when it's something that's totally different from the other primates you look after, I mean, diet-wise and everything. You know, it's weird to do a diet up for these with no fruit in it at all. I mean, I'm so used to, like, chopping up bananas and things for monkeys. I mean, everybody thinks monkeys, you know, they always think uh, of a banana. These can't have anything like that. It's all veg and salad. 
obviously the main part of the diet is the leaves and stuff in the wild, so we have to supplement that as well. But it's interesting, it keeps you on your toes and, you know, it um, makes you think more. Instead of coming into work every day and doing your usual duties that you normally do, it makes you think a bit more about what, you, what you're doing. Oh, shut up. Ah, good boy. Good boy. Yeah. Well, it's about three weeks since uh, Chandra arrived now. Uh, the mix went really well with Aquila. Um, in fact, on day one, when we mixed them, they had that one little scuffle, the boxing match, which she won. Uh, and in the afternoon, they were Wait. mating. Yeah. So you don't get a better mix than that. This is a new thing we're doing, this sort of stick feeding. Chandra, oi, come here. Which is a, a new method of feeding we're using. It's good because we can get them up close with this. We can check them out for any physical, just give them sort of physical look over. Um, it's also good if we ever need to medicate them. If we get them used to taking meat like this. Oh, Aquila's turned up. Uh, hey, you stay here. Good boy. Gently. Gently. Oh, hey, enough. All done. Every morning I come in, you see things, I still get the same buzz. And when you're, from when I was a kid, and when you're a little kid and you see your first giraffe or your first elephant, I don't think that leaves you. Oh, wow. The modern zoo is basically for education, for conservation and for research. We still entertain to a point. We need people coming through the gate to finance uh, the work we do in conservation and education. Uh, we hope that they get the, 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 the feel of the animal. That, that, that's better than anything for, for, for people learning, basically to smell an animal, to actually see it, to see it move, to hear it. At the very base on, if we're raising awareness, if we are getting a species going in captivity in the UK and in Europe or whatever, in my mind it feels like I'm contributing something when the option is contributing nothing. So I'm aware of all the flaws of zoos. I'm not the greatest fan of all zoos by any means, um, but I would rather be on the side of the person doing some tiny thing than the side of people doing nothing.